Well, hey, you guys, today's scripture reading comes out of the book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 31, and goes through chapter 9, verse 8. It's not that long. So, all right. Are you guys ready with me? Okay. So here it is. Jesus then began explaining things to them. It is necessary that the Son of Man proceed to an ordeal of suffering, be tried and found guilty by the elders, high priests, and religious scholars, be killed, and after three days, rise up alive. He said this simply and clearly so they couldn't miss it. But Peter grabbed him in protest, turning and seeing his disciples wavering, wondering what to believe. Jesus confronted Peter. Peter, get out of my way. Satan, get lost. You have no idea how God works. Calling the crowd to join his disciples, he said, anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Follow me and I'll show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way. My way to saving yourself, your true self. What good would it do to get everything you want and lose you, the real you? What could you ever trade your soul for? If any of you are embarrassed over me and the way I'm leading you when you get around your fickle and unfocused friends, know that you'll be an in even greater embarrassment to the Son of Man when he arrives in all the splendor of God, his Father, with an army of the holy angels. Then he drove it home by saying, this isn't pie in the sky by and by. Some of you who are standing here are going to see it happen. See the kingdom of God arrive in full force. Six days later, three of them did see it. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain. His appearance changed from the inside out right before their eyes. His clothes shimmered glistening white, whiter than any bleach could make them. Elijah, along with Moses, came into view in deep conversation with Jesus. Peter interrupted, Rabbi, this is a great moment. Let's build three memorials, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He blurted this out without thinking, stunned as they all were by what they were seeing. Just then a light radiant cloud enveloped them, and from deep in the cloud a voice. This is my son, marked by my love. Listen to him. The next minute, the disciples were looking around, rubbing their eyes, seeing nothing but Jesus, only Jesus. Well, kids, I'm so glad that you are here today to play and to learn. Um, so, What do you mean you can't hear me? So I guess you couldn't hear me. What did you think I might be saying? Well, I would usually say, hello, you're right. And how are you? Yep, those are things that I would normally say because that's what you usually say when you begin a conversation, right? Well, are there times when you know what a friend or a family member is going to say because they've said it to you before? We've all had that happen, haven't we? We know when mom is going to say 
it's your turn to do dishes. Did you forget to take out the trash? You know, things like that. You know, we know what they're going to say before they've said it because they've said it before. Okay, so here's another question. Are there times when your family members or your teachers tell you to listen? Very, very specific for you to listen because they don't want you to miss something very important. We've all had that happen too, haven't we? <laughs> well, the disciples weren't always the best listeners. Sometimes Jesus had to repeat himself over and over when they weren't listening. We can see that all through scripture. And in today's Bible story, God finally had to tell them outright, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. And sometimes we don't listen as closely as we should because we're excited about something else, right? Sometimes we don't listen because we think, because we think we know what the person's going to say. Sometimes we don't want to hear what they're going to say. Sometimes we just aren't paying attention. But when we don't listen, to important people in our lives, whether they're our family or our teachers or our friends, we miss out. We miss out. They might be telling us exciting news or giving us some good instructions. And we also need to listen to God and to listen to God's voice through God's word. To the things that Jesus said and the things that God spoke through the prophets and the things that the Holy Spirit is still speaking to us in our hearts today. So I have a game for you. Do you guys all know how to play the game telephone? This is a game for you to do at home with your family, okay? or um, extended friends, or something like that. Um, uh, I just want you to remain safe, you know, so I'd rather you just do it with your family members, but um, only you know who you've been isolating with. So. so this is a game for you just to try out for something fun to do, but it also allows us to see how important our listening skills are and how they're all different one from the other. It's where, so playing telephone is where you whisper this, uh, you, you, you come up with, you get to start it. You come up with a sentence, not a super long sentence, not for the first game. You don't want to get it hard, too hard to have fun with it. So maybe make a nice short sentence like, Mercy is laying in her crate. Something like that. Okay. Now, you know, Mercy's my dog, but it will be your own story or your own sentence. That's just an example about the length that I want you to try for your first sentence. Mercy is laying in her crate. All right. So what this is, you, were, you whisper, you stand in a line and you turn to the first person and you whisper, Mercy is laying in her crate. Just like what I said. Except for you whisper it, really whisper it. And then you wait until they nod their head and say they got it. Then they in turn go to the next person in the line and try and repeat it. Until that person says, okay, I got it. And they go to the next person. So you can try this with your sisters, your brothers, your mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, whoever is in your household or those people that you isolate with. And it's actually pretty fun. And you do this because we're gonna see how that original message changes if we aren't careful listeners. I want you to get as many folks in your house to try this game with you, okay? So um, when you get to that final person on the end and they nod their head, have them repeat to the group out loud what they heard. And then you can see if this 
story or this sentence changed at all. See if they were able to pass the message along without any mistakes. Then let the next person take a turn coming up with the, the sentence. You can make them increasingly harder as you go, but the next person and then the last person will come back around and tell you and you will be the last person. And you will have to tell everybody what you think happened all the way down the line. And you can't cheat. You can't listen to what the other person is whispering. Okay? So I want you to remember to change the sentence. And I want you to have a little bit of fun with this, all right? Okay. Well, let us pray and we'll call it a day. How's that sound? Dear God, thank you for all the ways that you speak to us through other people and through your word, and through our own hearts. Help us to listen carefully. In Jesus' name, amen.